Hello. There we go. Now you can go. Hey, what's Hi. up, everybody? I know starting this is always a little weird on the timing, but what's up? Uh, I'm Spencer. We've got our co-hosts, Ethan and Michael. Hi. I don't Whoa. know where I'm putting the screen. I'm not watching the yeah, screen. Yeah, you had it. It was perfect. Okay, hell yeah. Uh, we are hosting World Building for DMEs, or dummies, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, we're going to go step by step in the world world building process, going from the overarching ideas to the nitty gritty uh, of creating your own Dungeons and Dragons or any other TTRPG setting uh, for your players to muck around in. Um, today we're going to be tackling cosmology. Uh, we are building a standalone world for ourselves, so you can follow along while we're asking questions and trying to get a feel for it. Uh, and you can build your own at home. Today, we are on to the cosmology. It so is. each of us has prepared a few questions to ask the other uh, that we think might stimulate building upon uh, this this theme today. Uh, Ethan, you want to give us a breakdown of what our world is so far? We've yeah, talked. so uh, we, we, we worked our way down to a couple of key ideas that I think are important. Our, our larger sort of overarching genre is uh, kind of like a fantasy Western, trying to play with the sort of fictional western narrative uh more so than the the real one is just too sad <laughs> so the yes. sort of like fictionalized western as you can sort of apply magic and different fantasy tropes to it the basis that we did to sort of kick off that idea is we wanted sort of like um stories that we that fit into our concept uh we have uh john henry uh uh as in like uh, more focused on, I realize this is important to say after our stream last time, John Henry as in man versus technology, not as in the tragedy of uh, emancipated labor getting replaced yeah. by modernization. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going with the sort of like, do you remember the Disney cartoon version of it that was clearly yeah. watered down? That's kind of mm -hmm. where we're at. Uh, just sort of like the man versus technology. I should find a better, I'll probably find a better folk myth yeah. uh, at some point. Uh, it... The concept of like resource depletion and like dust bowl style like degradation of the environment by the advancement of technology and how like that's basically a price that at first is very jarring but eventually the wealthy people of the world are just willing to pay and everybody else is kind of along for that ride uh the changing landscape of laws and how that affects like daily life and then limited resources and zeroing in uh this was one of uh, spencer's major thoughts on that resource being magic on technology and magic both running on like this like arcane mana energy that i assume we'll name at some point we'll probably slap a title onto that uh during one of these Ooh, that would be fun yeah. Yeah. Looking at looking at that, we sort of broke down into a couple of ideas of what those mean, and we settled on two re two really good sentences. And this was the end of our low effort, hmm. low time. And that is, the god of magic is dying, and the old world is ending. Because both of those sentences are immediately evocative, immediately powerful, and are like the first sentence of a campaign in a very easy and accessible way. From there, uh, our next big thing is we we created two NPCs. Uh, that are sort of a vehicle into interesting questions. Uh, that is Oakworth Thyssen, uh, a fey lore keeper who lives in a big tree that's a library. Or some really <laughs> like a classic oh. shit. Uh, and Carissa Heltharis, who changed her last name uh, in order to become a tech magnate in this world. Uh, uh, one of the people that is sort of like riding the coattails of the... Uh, uh, sorry, well, I guess no, provide providing the coattails okay. <laughs> she is the coattails the outfits that people will ride upon uh yeah. yes uh, uh, a fey deal we decided to connect with the two through a fey deal carissa heltharis made a deal with oakworth this and to gain access to the resources of the fey wild to produce this amazing technology uh and so her the heltharis tech or heltharis corp we didn't really settle on um is sort of that uh, 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 direction that she is one of those like major figures. And we're going to use those two people as a vehicle to give perspectives. Uh, yeah. World world state, we've got a war of attrition with pockets of combat. In most of the place, most of the world, we are just seeing degradation. In a few areas, people are attacking each other. And then the Feywild has left the world behind, mainly because we want Oakworth Thyssen to be inaccessible. Uh, the Feywild has cut itself off from our own reality. Um, 
our pre-world inciting incident, a arch wizard of some sort did some sort of stupid magical thing, trying to, you know, basic, like, we didn't really settle on what the event was, tried to become a god, tried to fuse two worlds, classic unlock, fantasy. Unlock 10th level spells, yeah, some yeah, fantasy stuff. stuff uh, and proceeded to flood the world with magical energy uh, that killed any high-level casters, injured horribly any powerful magical entities, and wounded the god of magic. And that is why the god of magic is dying. This led to tech being on the rise, not for particularly like sort of the pernicious, I want to make money by exploiting the environment, but more just like, oh, cool, we need to solve the problem of there being no high-level spellcasters in our magic-reliant world tech explodes mm -hmm. uh, and then the end game that we sort of settled on is just magic will die if nothing changes uh the world's supply of magic will just run out it will stop being restored uh uh by whatever sort of like cosmic bs magic uh provides magic which is almost certainly what we're going to talk about mm. today yeah um and what's great about that as a, a story building mechanic is that's a problem for both the old world and the new world Right. If you were going to build a world and you've only got one side to it, your players are going to feel a little bit railroaded. Like, oh, you have to stop this. So the age of magic, blah, blah, blah. Magic going away is going to affect tech because they're basing their technology off of utilizing the magic found throughout the world. So it's going to be a problem regardless. So when you are campaign building, it's interactable either way. So that's great. And if you decide to campaign build in this world and you're just running a free marches campaign with your friends and you play once every three months, you don't have to interact with that story at all. It is like a, it is a at least semi far flung. If you are interested in it, guess what? That timetable just moves up a hundred years and mm -hmm. it's going to die in 10 years. If nothing happens, if not, you get to push it off into the distance and just sort of play in this space. Uh, this leaves us, as we sort of move into what we were talking about today, I think we've kind of set ourselves up to have two questions I see. And I obviously, if the two of you have any, these aren't questions, the questions that I have prepared. These are just essentially corners we have written ourselves into is there, <laughs> there are Fae and they have a realm and mm -hmm. there is a place where the magic is. And that actually does a lot to our world is oh, magic definitely. comes from a location that you can tear into Mm -hmm. uh, is is one of the other things that we've sort of trapped ourselves in. Uh, if do either of you have any other like whoopsies that we've kind of already done? That's the major one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pigeonhole my question into that situation, which is like when you're deciding on it, planes are something that's like a D and D thing, right? Yeah. The planes of existence. That's not universal. If you're playing Vampire the Masquerade, it's just the planet like that's it so one question we could ask ourselves while we're building this is are we dealing with a planet that's in space that you can uh, interact with like eldritch beings that are considered gods uh the fey wild is another planet that's linked to ours or are we talking the ethereal plane the uh primaterial plane etc cetera, etc cetera? that's a, that's the first question and we can go either way with it but i figure we should get that out of the way first yeah, um, I'll say my preference is for planes of existence like stacked on top of each other. I, I don't I don't usually go in for the it's another planet thing too much, um, but I know that that's sort of like just me. I don't hate it or anything. It's just not a device I love because inevitably you have players that are you have like an astronomer player. Mm -hmm. And I think it takes a little bit of the wind out of their sails to have what they're reading in the sky be like six planes it also gives you the question of like if those are the planes what are stars yeah does your world have stars that's a fun one to not uh skip out on if you want your world to just have six globes that are the planes that float around in the sky really? it's not a terrible idea um it's one that i don't think anybody ever interacts with and you can end up being able to have fun with in our other campaign um so like theros uh has a moon Hmm. And sense. the book of, and that makes no sense. Theros is like a lone continent, not even a planet really with nothing else in it. And a sky of like swirling magic. Godly and, energy. Uh, 
And the underworld is the only other plane, so the moon makes no sense. And so we got to have a blast just coming up with what what the hell is the moon? And one of Spencer's characters entirely based around the fact that we had to sit down and figure out what the what the fuck the moon was doing in Theros. Yeah. So uh, I've immediately let us off the path. Uh, so I though the planes are not physical. The planes are like dimensional. Okay. Yeah, I agree specifically for this time it's because we're building for 5e we're doing dnd 5e and there's so many spells built around planar usage yeah. you know like uh etherealness or plane shift mm -hmm. if you're doing a space campaign where it's like earth in an alternate reality plane shift doesn't make any sense it doesn't do anything so because we're doing that i I'd, I'd lean more that way uh towards okay. planes so we have dimensional planes uh, and so now we know that there is a plane that the fake came from, and there is, uh, there is a plane where magic is like, uh, it, where magic comes from, literally, in a in space somewhere. Uh, I guess specifically not in space somewhere, as in like physically. There is a place you can go, and that is where magic is. In the mirrored reality. Yeah. So is that that's your first question? Yeah. Yeah, that was the first one. Okay. Um. So my oh, my okay. first. Uh, I think ties in really well, which is are the planes mirrored or are they their own spaces? Uh, uh, so like is the primaterial plane as a like geographic setting? Are the other planes like different filters that have the same mountains and valleys? Mm -hmm. Or are they completely separate spaces that don't have the same geography as the normal world? my gut reaction would be to have them as their own reality. Okay. Because when you mirror, it opens up a whole can of worms. Like, okay, if I move this uh, pot of soup from here to there, is the mirrored reality also going to have it moved? If that's the case, why aren't the other beings in the other realms affecting our reality? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in Curse of Strahd, I did mirror realities when you guys were going... In Curse of Strahd, I did mirrored realities. So you guys were encountering things that were a little bit weird. Uh, but I didn't even answer most of those questions because they were really hard to answer. And I didn't feel like doing it. If you want to know just about everything about our world building that you need to know, uh, if, if memory serves, Spencer and I both do not like Curse of Strahd. <laughs> No, I don't um, think it's well written at all. I do think I do think it's the best one, and that is because all love to Wizards of the Coast. Please sponsor us, please. I don't like any of them. <laughs> I don't like any of the setting books. What? I think they all give me information that I do not want and leave out the information that I desperately need to run a campaign. I'll I'll, I'll put it out there if they want to sponsor us. We'll make campaigns for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Coast. Hi, we, book, buy this book. We, it only we took, will do that for you. It only took Matt Mercer like 30 years to do that. So if we can just kick up the speed yeah. on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got this. Um, yeah, I I, I, I like Curse like that. I like Curse of Strahd. I thought it was cool, cool characters. I don't, I don't know how much you changed about it. I it's it's fun to play it. it is It is fun to play it. That yeah. is true, a hundred percent of the time. Michael Payne yep. <laughs> play it. Yep, I can it imagine. Is a less pleasant experience. Yeah, there are, there are things that they did really well, like setting up the the energy of the world. Great, everything for the gothic horror vibe works together to make it feel like a gothic horror campaign. Yep, which is something we can steal from to use in our world building. Everything else is a little bit less, a little bit less. So let's. Uh, so last time, uh, to peel back the curtain a little bit, we got through like three of our 20 or yeah. our 15, I guess, technical questions between the three of us. I don't know if Michael also prepares a full five. I, 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 I got a question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's hit our next question. All right. Yeah. So uh, my question, is, it, it's still tying into a lot of what you were just talking about. Uh, how, how easy is it to traverse to these different planes? Is it like a... I will cross that question off of my list. Me too. Oh, that's, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, my, but, mine is how interactable should the planes be and how does that yeah. affect the world? Yeah. yeah. Is it like a, is it like a train <laughs> that goes from plane <laughs> to plane? Is it like, and, and like, do these planes know about each other? Or like, is I one think, hidden? I like 
so as far as travel goes, I like travel being a pain in the ass, but slightly more possible than it is in canon Dungeons and Dragons Faerun. In canon D&D, it is nearly impossible to traverse yeah. the planes. You need like a tuning fork made out of the metal of that plane tuned to the frequency of that plane's like rotation. It's incredibly difficult until you're like level 15 and players really want to go to other planes <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just making it easier lets them buy into that a little faster so mm -hmm. i actually want it to be a little easier than it is in D D. so i think i don't know what do we let's let's kick that around a little bit all i know is that i want it to be a little bit easier i mm -hmm. here's what i'm thinking the train idea i laughed at at first because we had a train in barovia that literally yeah. did that it was never used but it was a thing hey we used it like once <laughs> you encountered it once mm -hmm. uh I, I think that in this setting in particular, mm -hmm. an actual Wild West train that, like, goes to and from, it could be, like, prohibitively yeah. expensive or something. But having that built in is pretty fun. And it leads to, like, when the Feywild shut down their, their borders, that's a big deal because it's one of, like, you know, 2, 3, 20, whatever areas that you could travel to. And they said, get the fuck out. It's yeah, badass. I I, I'm, I'm completely in immediately, and I specifically <laughs> need it to be a train because yeah. you can sneak your way onto a train. Yeah. And most importantly, if your characters eventually want to work really hard to get to the Feywild, you can jump off a train. Yes, and sir. so the thought of, like, Feywild Station is closed, but the train still goes through the Feywild. Mm -hmm. If you want to jump off of an interdimensional train, you can certainly give it a try. I love um, So Do we want to hatch out how this train works a little bit or do we want to save that mike what was your your follow-up i was just going to add a little fun thing oh, because wait, sure. wild west trains uh stick them up uh th thieves some robbery <laughs> yeah some train, rob some train robbery kind of stuff could be fun too and how yeah, would it that look <laughs> It, it leads into the, one of the questions that I don't have that I assume we will eventually ask, which is, like, how dangerous are these planes? But, like, I think we should give that its time. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Just, just I, I just wanted to say whatever I was thinking. I, yeah. I think the next major question is, how many planes are we looking at? This is another one of my, my questions. How many different ones? We've got the plane of magic. We've got the prime material plane. We've got the Feywild. There's also probably going to be a heaven, probably a hell. I, Etc. What are I, we doing? Mm -hmm. I always advocate for nine because there are nine alignments in D and D. And again, I don't love alignment, but a lot of abilities are tied to alignment. So having nine planes that are tied to the nine alignments, I tend to find to be like really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, what are what are other thoughts on that? That's where I always go. Mm -hmm. So super duper biased. So I think I don't. I honestly don't have a number in my mind when I'm doing my world building. It's the basics. It's like heaven, hell, earth. Those are guaranteed. Because if you don't have heaven and hell, you're going to have a lot of stuff that makes no sense. Paladins, warlocks, etc. Yeah. Uh, after that, it gets a little <laughs> bit loose. Whatever I think whatever would help like implement the world, help influence it in some way, add those in. But I never go as expansive as, as nine. I'm open to it. I've just this never is, done it. This is where we get into... Uh, this is a great moment where you sort of transition from low effort to neutral effort. And again, yeah. low effort is not an insult. There is a, definitely a time and a place for it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm low effort for, for uh, planar creation. That's my whole thing is low I, effort. I love making planes. It is my favorite part. I love figuring out where angels come from and if they are like biblical horror stories or if they mm -hmm. are just benevolent, essentially, spirits. Uh, so like a really good, easy, low effort option is like what Spencer said. You need a good place, you need a bad place, and you need the Feywild. And you need a bad Feywild, I tend to think. Like you need yeah. the Feywild, but it's shitty. It's fucked um, up. Which is like four. And that's the base. You need up, down, left, and right. And you're pretty much good. Um, I tend to... Uh, uh, that adds... Leads into my... Uh, my my fourth question, which is, when you die, do you go to one of these planes, or is this world uh, a little bit spookier, uh, like our own, where it's kind of like ah, everybody's. Um, so, okay, so Spencer, you want to keep things simple. I want there to be literally nine. 
Hmm. Let's split the difference and pick a nice round fantasy number. Do we want five or seven? Five. five. Okay. I like five as as a as a player. I, I own DM, but as a player, I I think having the idea of there being a bunch is cool, and but only having like a certain amount of them fleshed out is a good idea yeah. too. Like like have so, have nine, but have five fleshed out because... so there are five there are five train stations yeah mm-hmm. and the question remains of like is there more out there and that sure. foggy area over there we don't build our train station it's a little fucked up yeah, yeah because like again as a player i start to feel overwhelmed if i have so many like oh i need to go to all of them cool well careful with Feyrune. there's 13? 13 or 14? Yeah. There's, well, first of all, in Faerun, there is, so actually, I this is, we're getting into the nerd stat here. There's nine in Faerun for each of the alignments. There are the four planes of elemental chaos, and then there is the Feywild and the Shadowfell. Uh, the Feywild, and then there's Sigil, which is the city of doors, which is where the Lady of Pain chills out. Uh, Don't even know that one. Hmm. That one's not even in my, my lexicon. Yeah. So, so there's, so it's Sigil is, like, out. It's the only place where you can get to every single other plane. The Shadowfell and the Feywild are reflections of the Primaterial Plane. The four planes of Elemental Chaos surround the Primaterial Plane, and where they intersect is the Primaterial Plane. And then there are nine extra-dimensional planes that encircle the world. And everything else just kind of, like, filters in there somewhere. Like, Curse of Strahd takes place in the Shadowfell in a closed-off section of the Shadowfell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a demi plane within a plane. Like it's so much. As you guys could tell, this is my whole this is my whole shit. So yeah. yeah. Uh so we we've come up that we want five. Yeah. Do we want to hammer these we should we should hammer these out quick. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's cool. Um, okay. in my have... opinion, I, I think it should be like four four normals and then like a fifth that just like it spices it up. It's like, oh you you know about it. You it'd be really weird to go to it, but you could, and it would it'd be old Me- what? mechanist in norm mechanist in canon D and D, the yeah. neutral lawful clockwork world that no one goes to. Mm-hmm. It's like why the fuck would it, you're gonna pay ten thousand gold pieces to go to this weird place? Come so, on the train. Uh, I will say one thing. We've uh, so we've created one odd situation. So we we have our five that we can physically go to. And then, so our magic plane is already not one of those five because you can't, if you can take the train there, the big spell doesn't make a boatload of sense anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that going there would be dangerous because it's yeah. locked up and dying. So right the place. I, I, I think I want to motion, uh, I want to answer my third question because it'll help. Do mm-hmm. gods have their own planes? Hmm. Yes, I think that when we build the underworld or whatever in afterlife, I think it should be separate from the domains of the gods. I think that's something where it's like, no, we're not going to go hang out with our version of Heliod. Like, you're not going to get on the train and go talk to God. It's not going to okay. happen. I like this. So, so this helps our cosmology kind of expand off into the reaches, which is like there are even divine planes, but you cannot reach them. So, like mm-hmm. the god of magic who is dying is off somewhere. Like he's not dying in a field and people go pray, which yeah. is a cool option, right? That he is physically dying somewhere in the world, uh, but not the most conducive to the story, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we have a fey plane. We have the distant plane of magic. We have the distant godly planes. Um, I'm gonna say we have a we have a, a fey but bad plane because that is how it's hmm. got to be. So we have mm-hmm. three to work with that people would want to go to and has something to offer to the world. Uh, Are we including uh, the plane that everybody's currently on in our tally? Like the the humans plane, the people's plane, whatever you want to call it. This is a question I literally never considered at all. <laughs> is there a prime material plane, or are we on a plane? Hmm. Like, is there a middle to this chart, or are we one of the five planes of the world? I feel like the question is with planes. A lot of the time, they're like 
built around something, some concept, some idea. The prime material plane is like, this is where everybody goes when they don't slot into that. This is like the people, the, the things that the gods play with, etc. So if they were going to be one of the planes, it's like, what is your plane's shtick? But if it's a prime material plane, it's like, it doesn't need to have a shtick. This is just where life is. This is the existence. You know, so I'd probably go if it's like a prime material plane. Okay. So we have so we have Fey Realm, which is like um a lot of uh for me it's like how magic interacts with nature. Yeah. Extrapolated out to the infinite degree. It's mm -hmm. that uninterrupted by human existence. Uh our bad Fey plane, I think I like the idea of that really being an inverse. So is there something fun about there being an intensely arcane plane in the way that the Feywild is intensely natural? Mm. Or is it just intensely unnatural and we're not going to tie, we're not going to attach the word arcane to it? It would probably make sense to have that, like, as... Uh, I was going to say, if that's what the, the original wizard drew from, was that like wild arcane location mm -hmm. that was before the train was built, etc. That could be the one. And it's like, you're not going there. The train could pass by it, but it's not like a stop you go to. It's dangerous. Nobody's allowed to go. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I like this. I think, so I think that is one of our train stops. And I think that is our bad Feywild is wherever arcane magic used to be like housed. And I think that, arcane magic just isn't there anymore right it got like shot it's off everywhere. Right and so now we have this like shadowfell-esque place because again we got a kind of we got a sort of circle D, &D so that yeah. if somebody picks like a shadowfell ranger that does things make sense mm -hmm. uh so i like the idea that there is this world that is just rotting yeah that is just actively in decay because the the force that kept it up is gone um okay Let's move on to plane number three. I have no ideas. We said we wanted hell. We're looking at we're looking at an afterlife here, right? The question is, this should this is going to be the most influential thing for every campaign. If your afterlife is chained up and locked up and nobody can access it, that gives you a different sense than uh, your heroes at level five can go down the stairs and grab their friend from the pits. Like what? What's the energy we want from the underworld? So this is somewhere that I think we are potentially going to disagree because I, I was he I'm hesitant to have the underworld be one of these five planes because I do not want my players to be able to go there. Um, the solution that a lot of settings do is you aren't you when you get there, right? Yeah. You, when you when you land in the nine hells, you're a Lemur, you're a level, you're a CR zero devil. You can't go get your friend. You can go get the twisted, horrible creature your friend has turned into. Yeah. Um, that tends to be the like broad solution. Sure. Uh, it also it leaves us with a question of: Do you go to? Do bad people go to the bad plane, or do people go to the plane that they live their life in line with? Mm. Like, if you're an intensely logical arcane practitioner, do you go to Decay Town? If you're a very natural, like, carefree spirit, do you go to our version of the Feywild? If you're, like, a monster, is that why you go to the Hells? Or do you go to the Hells because you were a bad dude? Oh. I'm, go I'm gonna push heavily against if you are bad, you go to the bad place. Mm -hmm. Because if that is true and a fact and in the world and you know who goes there, we quickly have, like, there's no villains. There is no <laughs> mortal human villain in your human world because everybody would be terrified. terrified. They'd, be like, They'd be like, this is my audition. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't. It would be like if, yeah, exactly what I've just said. You, yeah, you wouldn't I, have any villains in the world. I would even be able to go so far as to say, like, the afterlife that mortals go to doesn't have to be like uh, a hell as we see it in D and D or uh, you know Christianity in in the real world. It could be like when you die, your spirit appears in this plane of spirits. You can't visit it because you're not dead, so you can't go get your friends. The plane is just poop. You operate there as a ghost, a spirit, something else. All right, 
I, I think we've reached kind of a we've reached a rough point yeah, here, yeah. which is yeah. we keep we keep making planes that you can't go to, and we want there to be a train. <laughs> so I think true. So I think if we want our underworld to be like that, it's not one of our five visitable, accessible planes. It's it it gets sent out. Because you need to be able to go there, otherwise we lose the train. No point. Yeah. Okay. So if if you go to a specific plane, depending on how you were as a person, there is no underworld plane because that doesn't exist. You just show up in the Feywild as a dryad or something. If you go to the underworld because you're a spirit, it's visitable, but we do have to have a reason to not be able to just grab your person and be like, all right, you're coming back with me, idiot. Come on. Uh, which is easy enough, like you said, just wipe their memories. Um, you can go to the underworld and you can try to find them, and if you bring them back, maybe you can resurrect them. But it's like something that nobody's ever done before, something like that. I mean, we could do like, if you really want to be able to go there, uh, we can do the. I have, a, I have an offer. We can do uh, uh, something I've 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 run kind of before. Is you can go there, spirits can't leave, and spirits lose their memories fast yeah. like so let's here's my, here's my pitch so it is a realm you can go to the train goes there uh you can talk to the people there you can chat with them you can spend the day with them uh there's definitely some festivals in the world that center around like saving up all of your money to make this trip to go see like family members when they forget themselves completely they recycle and we have reincarnation yep works for me that makes perfect sense uh, that works a, as well. There's still a reason to go. It gives it a different energy. That works. Okay. So, uh, but so we do have, like, I'm gonna just write underworld because we we can flush these out either in subsequent episodes or in a couple of questions if we find ourselves kind of running out of uh, running out of steam here. Sure. So we've got good. So we've got natural magic. We've got arcane magic. We've got death. Uh, and souls cannot return from it. We've got two left. Um, I think hmm. elemental plane seems fun to me. I do love the idea of the like demonic fiendish plane because it's fun to have one of these places where it's like incredibly dangerous and that's why people go. Like yeah. they go because it's full of there's like towers of crystal and gemstone, but all of the beings there are like horrible pit fiends that are like tyrannical, horrific beings. Um, so I, I love that idea. And I think that could be a cool source of like, people are trying to take from like, this is where like some of the, the new up and coming, coming starter programs are starting to try and get some of their, their resources from and it's just it's not good it's not going so this, well but it's it could be so profitable so this is like a new colonization project that is not getting off the ground that yeah. is just too dangerous too yeah. dangerous to function yeah i mean when, when we were considering that the arcane magic spilled into all the other planes because it was ripped open for that like second or whatever it would end up in hell as well. And it's like, we've run out of all the easily accessed one. The Feywild shut down, so we can't access it anymore. We can't get that magic. All we've got left is hell, so let's give it a shot. But it's like tainted and fucked up and bad. So we've got, he we've got hell and one more. So I have, I, I, I have a pitch that I am partial to, which is let's have dangerous bad and dangerous good. Uh, this is something that I, I am always a big fan of is it's like hell is dangerous because the beings that live there, not because it's like, uh, uh, like where bad people go, but because the beings that live there are cosmically evil creatures. Like they are fiendish. They spit fire and drink blood. And like, that's what they do. Uh, and I think we should also have a celestial plane that is dangerous because um, like, if you take any virtue too far, eventually you land in like inaccessibility. So mm -hmm. like, uh, feel free to, to veto this. Cause again, this is one of my like kind of preferences is I like the idea of a plane where you encounter a, like on a normal plane, you encounter a spirit of justice and they're, you know, always encouraging people to do better. And then if you go to like the plane of law, 
or like the the celestial plane and you meet like an archon or angel or like spirit of justice it's like when you were six you took your brother's toy shing prepare yourself Mm -hmm. like prepare for judgment mortal like how can two planes that are both dangerous and both wealthy in resources yeah so that player high level players have a reason to go there big world governments have a reason to go there but they are extremely dangerous in a very fun way i'm all for that i think it makes sense you know if if you're building the physics of the world having things that are pure good pure law pure evil pure chaos it makes perfect sense they're in the plane that inhabits those mindsets so they've been created to fulfill the physics of the world, yeah. which is these evil concepts and these good concepts and lawful, etc. So I'm all for it. I think that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. And it gives your players something to interact with, which is always great. So I like I like our, our escape here. We've got natural magical plane. We've got unnatural magic plane. We've got the underworld. We've got fiendish magic, and we've got celestial magic. And I think that's I think that's really strong because even before we have gods. We have a plane for paladins to draw from. We have a plane for Clara. I actually just found out I'm very wrong about paladins and that they like actually pull from their oath and not their oath to a god. So I guess paladins pull from wherever paladins pull from. We have somewhere that clerics get their magic from and we have somewhere that warlocks get their magic from. And then we've got arcane and natural. So we've got we've got druids, wizards, clerics, and warlocks covered. So we're basically good. Everybody else is doing some permutation of that. Yeah. yeah, and then sorcerer is like you know you just got that shit from somewhere. Your My... great great grandfather mm. touched a dragon's eyeball or something. I don't know. Mm. Who cares? The classic. Yeah. My hair. Uh, great. That that all works perfectly for me. I think that that at least gets us a, a visual representation of the cosmology. Mm-hmm. All right. You get on a train. You can get somewhere where you can harvest these materials. Good luck though, because that angel is going to cut your head off because you punched somebody in the face once. So. So uh, we're, we're at the end of our first kind of like official time block here, our, our like 6.30 to 7. Uh, and I like where we are. And I think this is a good opportunity to say this is a great place to stop. If you yeah. don't like making cosmologies and like Spencer does not like it as much as I do. Uh, Michael, I don't know how you're feeling in this moment. I, I, I like it. It's is... cool. It's interesting. It, it gives a little, a little spice to your world. Yeah, this is my whole bag. So, like, this is a great place to stop, right? We have a couple of core planes that all have, like, a fun purpose and reflect a part of the world. We know that there are some outliers. We know that the divine planes are these inaccessible uh, uh, places. We have some important questions answered. And we have a very easy way to get there if you have the resources to do so. This is a great place to stop because, like... Uh, for a lot of DMs, uh, uh, you you might ask your players, like, hey, how much planar stuff are you interested in? And five people are going to say none. And then you're going to be like, okay. <laughs> and have to, and and the correct answer is to rip up what you made. Uh, uh, try not to fall into the pitfall of like, no, I'll make them go there. Like, hmm. this is just, in, this becomes information that unfortunately, man, you just don't get to use. <laughs> like, it's just yeah. not how it's going to pan out. Uh, so moving into our next section, we can start asking nittier, grittier, fun questions uh, and and delve into the things that we find interesting about this cosmology that we've kind of set up. Um, I want to open with one of my classics. Do we have Eldritch Horrors? Do we have any horrors beyond the stars? Are we leaving that? Are, are we leaving that sort of trope uh, out of this world? I mean... What is our? How do I? How do we feel about that? As much as I love them, I'm not confident that they fit in, especially because we've kind of already done them with our fiends and our celestials being so distant oh, from no, like, no. normal life. Yeah, I feel like if we were to add one, I think it would be like one, and it would be like, it would be this outlandish thing of like, your characters do this one thing that sets it in motion. Yeah, the only thought I had was a question that we haven't answered yet is like, what happens when a god dies in this world? So the only feasible in I see is if the god of magic dies, does something like take his place? Does like a god of anti-magic come into existence? Or, right? Does like the inverse power 
begin to exist in the world? And unfortunately, I just don't think that's an interesting question. <laughs> like, Fair. it's fun for you as a world builder, but like the whole point's going to be that he doesn't die. So I really don't think we gain much from setting up the are We already have the really strong consequence of magic dies. I don't think we also need a big spooky tentacle monster. So unfortunately, I think the answer to my question is no. <laughs> yeah, I here's the thing. I do think if the god of magic dies, probably the god of technology claims that throne. Maybe there's a limited amount of uh, divine thrones, etc. So he just gets it because he's been worshipped into existence, and now he gets to claim it. Um, mm. As far as other worldly creatures go, I gotta say no. I don't think that it fits the vibe of the campaign. Uh, if we were going for that like unknowable terror beyond, like then sure. But sure. For, for a while, yeah, here's Benny. Hey, Benny. Uh, mm. for a while, it, is, it, it, it is a fun thing to do in a Western setting, but I don't think that's our world. Especially because like, problems that i could see coming up of like where do beholders come from where do because beholders come from you know the color out of space bad zone uh so do mind flayers we have this decaying arcane plane hmm. like we have these dangerous creatures we have a reason that they're leaving their safety the safety of the arcane plane to explore other worlds we have a really good reason that any favorite monsters of your players can exist in the world and yeah. i'm always i'm always gonna do uh, uh, a cowboy mind flayer because I mean come on come yeah. on you're not gonna do it you're not gonna take that chance no way uh, and, so yeah I'll, I'll kick over to you guys give me what questions uh, are you kind of left with here yeah, or I do just, you I have... just I just uh, along with what you're saying I just wanted to add like this is just like our campaign like if you want like a, uh, oh, getting a little feedback. Sorry, uh, if if you want like this tentacle monster that comes from space, like do it. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, uh, this is whatever you want to change. This is we are not trying to sell you a setting. We are trying to, to just sort of give you a sense of what this process looks like. Take take some of the spooky factor out of sitting here for thirty minutes to an hour to an hour and a half and being like, all right, there's planes. What planes are there? Like, what questions do we need to ask? Who lives there? Can you get there? Uh, just trying to take some of the mystery out of this and, and give you a clearer picture of just what it looks like, which is everything we've said so far fits on an index card. <laughs> yep. Like, it's uh, it feels like a lot, but once you've got it down, you're really just getting the bare uh, kind of bones information that you you feel like you need and that you are having fun making. When you stop having fun, stop writing. <laughs> just do something else. Uh, so that sort of business out of the way what other questions do we have or what things have you sat there and gone this is true now because i love it yeah so what i'm thinking is um we need to figure out the the feel of the planes right so each one can still feel like that wild west setting uh you show up in the the plane of the angels they've got a, a six shooter on their hip they're not an unknowable cosmic divine being that you can't see. They just embody that, but they look like a person, you know? Or do you want your players to get to the celestial plane and it's uh, the golden light of the sky is blinding and they can't understand it? Uh, I think that's a big question that we need to answer for our plane, or our world in particular. I, I normally love the unknowable celestials. I think in this world we can't do that. Mm-hmm. Like the fun of this world is that these places are ex uh, are exploitable. Like that's where yeah. this genre is coming from, and it is what's going to leave us eventually with some of the fun moral questions that I'm left of. Like your players are going to have to start exploiting magical resources to be a part of this fight, and if the angels are unknowable thrones of fire and eyes, Don't you're just going to die. Like you're going to get there and they're going to turn you into soup. Like that's not fun. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, not even I think fortunately we kind of have a pretty good answer there i do want to explore this question more though because like i'm left with a lot of like how dangerous is it mm -hmm. and what is the nature of that danger like what is the nature of an angel in this world are they are these little bubbles of high fantasy that technology hasn't touched or are fiends and celestials created like by the unconscious of the world and so, like, do angels have guns now? Do angels yes. have blunderbusses? Has yes, <laughs> has the changing perception of man uh, and other. We haven't really talked about 
what what uh, fantasy races are in or out at this point. True. Has their changing perception changed these planes that actively and quickly? Uh, what what do we want our answer to be to that? So I think because we've made this this planar accessible train, that's going to influence it. Like the technology has spread to those planes by way of there being a train station going to the angelic domain and the hell domain. So if that technology is spread, all the other technology probably spread as well. It might be a little bit less in like the demonic plane because they're evil and fucked up and a lot of them will just instantly kill anybody trying to trade. But the lawful evil ones would probably want the technological advancement. So they're going to accept it. Uh, That's how you get like the different energies from both of them. You know, you get to uh, heaven and they've got all of the technological marvels and the celestial stuff. You get to hell, even they've got some of the technological marvels, but a lot of them are still fucked up, you know, beast demons that are going to kill you instantly. So that way there's still some differentiation. But I just think that because of how accessible we've made the planes, they would be pretty influenced by technology as well. Which is probably why the Feywild cut it off. They're like, if we lit technology in, the Feywild will be destroyed because we are the Feywild. We can't do that. Like, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So that way you still have those pockets of high fantasy in the dark and light Feywild. So these these worlds are understandable. They are reflective of like the change to technology. You're talking about feel. Do we want these different worlds to like be different? How different are we talking? Like, do we want different genres as we travel? Do we want like our the the planar dimension is a Western do we want the arcane plane to be the to be Mad Max and the underworld to be its own thing and the celestial world to be uh um I'm trying to I'm trying to think of more genres and I'm high fantasy and the yeah. fiendish world to be like pulp fantasy or do we kind of want a pretty unified sense like do we want the mm-hmm. sort of genre feeling to be the same this is my my DM mind behind this this is why i don't touch planes as much when i'm when i'm world building i think that in my mind to make planes more interesting i want them to be different genres and different feels and all that stuff but your players are so ingrained in this like western reality that if you pluck them out and put them Mm -hmm. in high fantasy it'll feel jarring and also as a dm you're gonna have to prepare a lot more I think- so for, for me i would say keep it as a similar a similar feel the same genre i think i think i agree with you i think you're misinterpreting my question a little bit because outside of like mechanists all of the planes of D are fantasy planes like there's mm-hmm. they're all in the same genre of i have a sword you have a shield let's hit him against each other yeah. until one of us dies the question here for me is do we want the fun of the celestial plane still being knights maha or do we want that western fights that are fewer people that are way more deadly is that the energy that we just want to keep because that's fine i don't think there's any problem with being like if the angels are having shootouts and because to me that is its scope and lethality right when you move from fantasy to western the scope goes down and the lethality goes up, right? Two people go in, one person is leaving. You can't run away when the other guy's got a gun. Yeah. And true. two, there's two of you, maybe five of you. This is like a small fight for one location. Mm-hmm. You aren't having these massive battles because we're not doing like a post-1950, like 1930s uh, uh, technology explosion, right? We're yeah. living in the development of it. True. So... I think I agree with you, and I think that that is a good answer. I think these worlds have adopted enough of this technology that they will have that same feel of the world. Like, the Mm. world's feeling will be reflected. The fiendish plane will be full of dangerous creatures, but it'll be full of dangerous creatures in the, like, desert survival sense. Not in the, like, blood war, an army of demons and an army of devils clashes in the middle, and your little band of adventurers is trying to, like, navigate the battlefield and not get caught in the middle. Mm -hmm. Instead, it'll be... Instead of a tiger jumping out of the woods and ripping the arms off of your character, it'll be a Baylor that's 100 feet tall that is scavenging for scraps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What do you think, Michael? Yeah, so I, I, I agree. I think that to make it cohesive, and we have this this combination of 
Western themes throughout all of it. I, I, I like the idea. Um, I do want to add, and it's kind of what I said before, I think that there should be one plane that just feels different. Uh, and I, I think that's the Fey Wild. Yeah, and that, that whatever one it is, I'm fine with it. I just think it's cool having an outlier, one that mm-hmm. just is just completely against the grain, yeah. just feels weird to be. I like that. I think I think I like it being the Feywild because it's the hardest to get to. And it's the one that has willfully and purposefully cut itself off from technology. So I do think the Feywild is this little bubble of like pulp fantasy. Yeah. Is this little section of like, if you got there with a gun, I think that most of the creatures there would not know what you had. I think they would, I think you would be a little bit, weirdly somebody out there will get it i'm thinking like ash in the army of darkness right you're gonna be this is my boomstick like you're gonna be a very oh. odd character in that world no. in a way that you wouldn't be in other worlds now do you think those characters should be immune to that kind of damage too the Feywild. this is i don't know how so here's a question that we need to answer together uh that i we probably should have answered beforehand do we want to spend more time with these individual planes in like further sessions going off of like what we have now or do we want to try to hammer everything out today because if so we need to just rattle down this list and do the like what are two things that are true and two things Mm. uh that aren't or like what are two things that are good and two things that are bad about each plane so that we can get the bare bones so that if somebody wanted to use the setting or if we all use the setting which we will Mm -hmm. we can flush it out later or do we want a further session of our, our stream here to be, okay, let's spend some time with the Feywild. Let's spend some time with the Arcane Plane. I think those are both good ideas for different reasons. I vote to go down the list and do two things that are true, two things that are, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And if we finish up and we're like, you know, actually, I think that this world needs more interaction with the plane, we can do a, a secondary. Cool. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So I think let's, we're still working in our second section here so i think let's hold <laughs> off let's do let's do our mm. last 30 of that let's okay. spend our last let's do 7 30 to 8 rattling down the list and being like what are some stuff that's true about the Feywild? what is some stuff that's true about this arcane plane we can mm. name them mm-hmm. uh uh decide if they have like king of hell king of like arch fey do they have those figures or are they not sort of ruled in that way do they not have these like uh, uh, like celestial creators. So that was Spencer's question. Michael, do you have one? Yeah. So my question is who made this train? Who wanted to combine the planes? I I think we have another industrialist up in the mix, right? I, okay. this doesn't seem like Haltharius bag to me. No, uh, I, 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 well, I, I wasn't sure if we wanted it to be this plane or another plane that did it. Secondarily, this is just a third a third option here. The new god of technology could have appeared, and it's like, wow, everything's going great. Here's an idea. Hey, all of you technologists, a gift. Travel between the planes. Spread the gift of technology. Uh, hop aboard and give it away, you know, etc. So there's not some dude who's like, I know all the inner workings of the planes. If you don't want that in the campaign, I'm, I'm open to that. that. Here's what I'm going to say. The only thing I don't enjoy about that is that that, that leaves our gods pretty in touch with the world mm-hmm. in a way that I tend to find causes a lot of problems of like, why this is me being the kind of player that I am. The question I'm immediately left with is, oh, why hasn't the God of magic just fixed things? Yeah. Like, if the god of technology can show up and be like, here's a dimensional train, right. why hasn't... We also haven't decided how many gods there are. I'm going to assume there's at least, you know, five or six. Why hasn't mm. the the god of balance looked at the injured god of magic and just been like, oh, I reseal the plane of... Ba-. Like, if the gods can yeah. interact that much, what are yeah. our heroes... Like, what are our heroes doing? Mm-hmm. Unless our goal is for this world to be like oops no heroes where it's like you are a dude trying to live you are not conan like you are not somebody trying to fix anything you are a person living in this world that sets a huge tone up front of like is the god of magic dying a problem that you are going to solve 
or is it something that is going to happen and you are trying to survive it? That's a hard, a hard one to answer because from my perspective as a DM and a player, being heroes and problem solvers is like a huge draw of the game. So being able to like solve the problems is massive. Looking at a Wild West fantasy setting, no heroes kind of fits into that theme more. It's like everybody's out for themselves, the industrial complex, the people who are trying to get back to the old world, etc. It's like people are just trying to make their world true because they're going to die otherwise or things are going to be shitty if not. So I'm really, t- I don't know. I really don't know because, yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Michael? Sorry, say, say again. I, I was doing something. So when, yeah, you're good. When you're, when you're considering whether it's going to be like a heroic fantasy world or a no heroes you're just trying to survive kind of world it it has huge ramifications for players and the dm and world building etc but if it's if it's no heroes the heroes are just trying to get by and survive they're not necessarily going to be able to solve the problems of the world but it fits into the genre of wild west more but if you go the opposite way it fits the genre less but it gives the heroes like we are the heroes and we're going to build and fix things And if this is too spooky of a question, uh, the other option that we do have is the god of magic gave gave the secret of planar travel to someone, and that someone now owns the railway. Yeah. Hmm, okay. Uh, So I, 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 we have the median option. It's, I really don't know what I want to do because it is fun to take the big swing. Like it's fun to make something very true that's very large about the world it leaves the most options open for your players and for eventual campaign building if it's the middle. If, like, a champion... If one of the first people to claim themselves as a champion of the god of technology received this gift of, like, the designs for the plane... Like, the plane engine that Mm -hmm. runs the train and can, like, bamf you to these other places. And then we get to have our... Carnegie? Rockefeller? Whichever one did (laughs) trains. One of them, somebody did trains. Uh, And we get to have a big branding across the side of the train. And we get to have a big logo on it, which is Mm. also very, like, in the feeling of, like, you know, you're not, it doesn't, you're trying to not piss off Transatlantic Railway is one of the very interesting things of, like, if you swing too hard and you make transplanar railways mad at you, you're not going anywhere, dog. Mm. But if the if the god of magic built the train, then the train is just there. The train just exists. And probably doesn't have people who pilot it. Like, it probably just runs. Like, the train always runs on time to these planes at these moments. It probably yeah. still stops at the Fey world. It's just the doors don't open anymore. Mm-hmm. I think we should go with the world has no heroes. That all died off 50 years ago when everything went to shit. But there's still a chance that heroes exist. And that's going to be you guys or these random adventuring parties, etc. So that way it's still like, the gods aren't going to touch fucking anything. They're a mile away. They're not going to solve your problems for you. If you want to solve the problem, you have to solve the problem. If you don't want to solve the problem, it's going to get worse. You've kind of blended two of our options, though, because so so you're describing hmm. you're describing the the version of reality where the the like consequences of the god building the train. But you're describing it as in like the god did not build the train. Some guy mm-hmm. built the train trying to survive. You are also trying to survive. So I think we have blended our two options. I think the gods are very distant. And our train was built by someone. Some asshole. Yeah, Longston McCree or whatever. It was Let's, like, I'm going to build a tree, uh, a gonna, train. I'm going to pop out dice here uh, uh, so that we can randomize some stuff here. Okay. Uh, so let's, so yeah, we want like Langston McCree or something. Let's do, I'm trying to not abide too much by the gender binary, but I'm trying to also do the math of like, if I do odds and evens, things get difficult, and there's no dice with an odd number of sides for us to do guy, girl, non-binary character. True. Let's go... This is statistically relevant. Let's go... Um, I'll go with a D8, if I can find one. I was going to say, just make it a Warforged, who understands the inner work <laughs> and so well. You know? Yeah, let's go... Well, let's go I love that. Let's go, uh, let's go non-binary robot. Let's go, like, a, a, a liberated Warforged. 
that mm. started their that started the railway. Um, I, what was uh, the name that we said? Because it was powerful. Uh, Langston McCree. I, I I'm I'm down for Langston. I I've told Spencer this. Um, it, it's a character idea that I would love to play at some point. It's a Warforged, but it's a Warforged made out of mimics. Yeah, yeah. yeah so so I would love that. <laughs> You know what's funny is you'd end up playing a changeling, I think, stats wise. <laughs> I, I, I think you'd have to use the the changeling race so that you could quickly alternate. So uh love this. We got Langston McCree. Mm. Uh is it like the transplaner railway, or do we want a more like single adjective Ooh. like mo- like do we want like you know how people name companies now where it's like quickbooks like do you want do we want like liberty like and that's the name mm. of the thing or do we want you know mccree railways or do we want like the transplaner railway hmm. hear me out langston international rail uh interplaner railway uh, railroad is great because the LIRR is the Long Island Railroad that connects Long Island to New York City mm-hmm. and having the lure in our fantasy world i think is very funny Oh, okay, like so the Langston yeah. Interplanar Railroad. I love that reference. Everybody loves a, re- a reference to the real world. Um, I'm also going to say to give us another spice of like technological heat death here. Langston makes other Warforged, right? Langston yeah. makes droids, right? Yeah, and they, they pile up the train, the, the security on the train, etc. I like that I... because it uh, the the trope of the trains must always run on time is one of my favorites because it leaves open a wonderful plot point for the inevitable campaign that happens here of somebody needs to stop the train and like Langston's tenant is the train will arrive on time. Mm-hmm. And so the players have to find some way to make the train be late I... uh, regardless of the consequences. Yeah. Quick little ad I like. Uh, you guys can say yeah, yes or no. I think Langston should be the person that he, he goes around and gets everyone's tickets. So I he's Langston is on the train. Yep. Langston. Oh no, I do like that because Langston's immor- like this immortal <laughs> robot. Uh, here's what I will say: it leaves us with another very fun option, which is Langston. There is a drone that looks like Langston McCree that for sure goes around and grabs the tickets. And maybe Langston's, like, consciousness is jacked <laughs> in. But I like to imagine him elsewhere. The, like, Mr. House steampunk spooky in me is, like, Langston is fused to the train. Langston Ooh, is the train yeah. is where my brain goes instantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That also leaves you with some interesting questions. Uh, but that's what I'm left with is, like, there are Warforged that Langston sends out that are autonomous beings, but the ones on the train are all Langston because the train is Langston. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's mind-melded into all of these automata that he's created. I think that yeah. makes perfect sense. Langston I, is a hive mind at this point. <laughs> one detail piece that I don't think matters, but I think is fun, so I'm going to say it anyways. Langston, because he's an immortal automata, he could have been around during that arcane pull. He could have been the assistant to the wizard who was attempting to pull that energy, and that's why he understands how the planes work and how to get to and from. Yes, like the yes, only I'm in. He does. Yeah. Exactly. It gives him an uh, in, a connection to that person for that problem, whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. Assistant to plane bust. I love it. also gives us why Langston is free. Yeah. His master the, is the swell of fried. I, I was thinking the swell of magic, like fried. Yeah. Cool. Whatever. Love it. Um, yeah. Uh, and this is this also, I like leaving this a little open ended because if somebody were to inevitably play in this campaign other than us you have a lot of fun options of like did that wizard die in the cataclysm or did langston see his shot Hmm. and go i've learned a great and horror i've learned a great truth i can make a lot of money i'm free and he doesn't know it yet and langston like cut the wizard's throat and kicked him into the portal uh Hmm. to get his freedom because langston could be your bad guy langston could be the like colonial power that's building these stations in other nations. And like the, the fact that the Feywild is cut off can be something Langston is fighting. Langston yeah. can be your like big industrial bad guy. Who's like, 
you or I will take your resources if you want them or not, my friend, and be somebody who's like trying to break through into the Feywild again. And we could even, if it's really open to interpretation, Langston could be that wizard. He just entered the body of his robot yeah. assistant. You know, yeah. for as a DM, you can do whatever you want. That's yeah, infinite say this. possibilities. If 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 you had ever said that around me, that's what I would do. I, I would be like, oh, cool, that's true now. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's just what now. Uh, that's better than my thing. Um, uh, just to sneak in a little DM tip here, um, do that. If you're ever like, hear somebody say something good, and you are fortunate enough to hear it before instead of after, do it. Just do it. Throw your lore out. I promise sure. you're going to be so happy. I, the players go like, oh, I guessed it. It's going to, yeah. Michael just did this to me. I felt so you. bad because I felt like I just took the wind out of your sails. No, it was great. I had this NPC who was looking for his brother that killed him and didn't realize that like, because of interplanar shenanigans, he was like a hundred years too late. And Michael just busted out like, oh, I thought he was going to turn out because he'd had he his memories. I brother. thought he was. I thought he was the murdering brother, and I was like, "God, oh, it's better. Oh, it's so much better than my thing." So yeah, if if you ever hear the better version before you've made the reveal, please, for me, please just do it. Yeah, that's a huge uh, DMing tip for one off in world building where it's like, oh, I don't know if it's gonna break the game or whatever. That's why you're building the world is so you can take those things and see how they integrate and just go along with it. If you're doing a one off. Fucking, who gives a shit? You just say yes and you roll with it. Oh, it's a, that guy's secretly a dragon. Yes, he is. He is now. He is <laughs> now. now. Uh, you see I'm... that the cobblestones underneath his feet shift as if he weighs many more pounds. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> I'm still so sad that in, uh, uh, oh God, uh, Adventure Zone, that uh, Angus never turned Angus. out to be a dragon. <laughs> It was so, so clear he was going to be a dragon. Mm -hmm. and such such low-hanging fruit. Yeah, um, I, uh, I am in a situation here. It is my turn, and I have no questions left. We're um, in the block anyways. We're at 730. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. That's yeah, right. we can I go on the planes. Good time. Uh, yeah. I do want to maybe squeeze in one. Uh, mm -hmm. I want, because we've set them up this way, I would love to hear what Carissa and Oakworth think, about, think of the planar system. I would love to do a little vignette. It could be yeah. like a couple sentences. We could spend three minutes on it. Um, and I think uh, this should probably be something we do every one of these. Is yeah. I want these two takes on it. I want love Oakworth, it. And, Oakworth and Carissa to just sort of weigh in. Um, my instinct up front is that Oakworth thought it was a beautiful system before there was a train. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that yeah. Oakworth would have a lot of things to say about like once the harmony of the spheres was beautiful and the music of interplanar travel twinkled in the ears and now you hear only the chugging of iron like yeah. if Oakworth has one of those fucking opinions I think that's pretty I think that's pretty good I'm... or it's a send up and he's like hmm. If only when I was alive, if only if it was so simple in my mm. time, we could have avoided everything if we could have been in such communique. I don't know. That's two very different. So I have origins. two things. I, I love the idea of the the old school not liking the change. Um, I do have the, the, the little question of, was there interplanar travel before this? I think there was like... You know, sixth level spells where you yeah. have to go make your metal fork out of the metal of that plane that you have to summon with a lower level spell and gotcha. do a bunch of BS. Uh, I think very powerful entities for sure, right? Yeah. We gotta have fiendish contracts. We've gotta have fake contracts. That's just fun. Yeah. Um, so I think there was ways to cross, but I think it was a lot harder. Yeah. And I think it was reserved for incredibly powerful magical beings. I, I do think that we've built Oak, Oakworth and uh, Halthrus as caricatures of the two sides of the coin. So I think it's so easy to be like, yeah, he he was like, the balance was perfect and now it's destroyed. Thus we've shut it off from our dimension. Like, that makes perfect sense. And for Halthrus to be like, hell yeah, I can get more magic this way. This is great. Finally, we can make more health potions, etc., etc., etc. I'm going to say, when we're done, I think we're probably going to co-write a setting and put it on dm's guild because it's going to be so fun to have like the way that i've drawn them on my note card 
<laughs> like it's going to be so fun to have like the gray and blue bubbles next to each other of like yeah. Oprah and Carissa just sort of chiming in exactly. about stuff as it happens. Um, okay. I mainly wanted to check in to see if there was a send up to see if either of them had a surprising opinion uh, or if it was just, it's totally fine if they fall within the line that we are expecting. And Carissa is like the, like the changes to our uh, m- Carissa's would be, um, Oh gosh, what did we want? We wanted to frame hers as like press releases. So hers yeah. would be like, I, it's my pleasure to announce that through a contract we've just signed with Langston Interplanar Railroad, we've gained access to like new ingredients and you can expect new and exciting pro, uh, products from Health Risk Technologies coming to a store near you. From hell is the, the through line at the bottom of that. It's yeah. written between the lines. And whereas Oakworth will have scathing critiques of the harmony of the spheres being disturbed. Yeah. Okay, uh, that press release thing, I want to... I'm more excited to write Carissa Health Risk press releases than I am to run this game. <laughs> that is... Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm genuinely so jazzed. We might do some fun homework for ourselves and maybe drum up some of these. Uh, okay, so we know what's next on our list. Uh, I think we should probably toggle who's, like, taking the lead on these do we want to start at the bottom or the top of our list do we want to start on the celestial plane or start in the in the feywild i say start in the celestial i think that'll have the biggest influence on everything all right else. first things first let's do the hard part let's just get it out of the way go with our gut what's fun let's name this let's name this bastard <laughs> Oof. um let's say name name what Name the, this bastard. Celestial the, plane. Let's slap a name on it. Name. Now it's important. This is not the godly plane. This is the plane of like powerful rule built entities that are like running on virtues mm. turned up to the point that they are dangerous. So like some play on word of Nephilim, like uh, mm. we can't do Nephilheim because that's already a thing, yeah. but like we could do like the justice are, you know, some shit like that. Uh, C A R, the just a car, something easy, straightforward. Feel, what else? Yeah, um, I like that as a faction. Definitely, mm. the just a car. The just a car is fun. They're like the virtues scaled up to the point that they're dangerous. Um, we could do like the like new wave fantasy thing and call the plane virtu like virtuosity. Yeah, true. or we can try to fantasy it, slap an apostrophe, and it could be like Verthal or like Verandis. Mm. And we can just get the root and the suffix, slap a dash in it, and call it fantasy. How do we feel? I think I'm that a... having more uh, of the the modern naming convention fits better with the Western fantasy. Sure. So if it is, you know, the 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 first thing that you proffered there, where it's yeah, the welcome name. to w- welcome to Virtue USA. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so let's do let's do the classic. Uh, I'm gonna start. Spencer uh, slash Michael, think of our two, we want to answer two questions about each realm that are important, and I'm going to Google synonyms to the word virtue. Okay. Two things that are true about the realm. Um, I think that it's true that they have widely accepted technology. Like, the, the prime material plane is the number one technological advancement. I think that it's like, this is an incredible tool for us. We're going to use it. Uh, it, you know, we're going to get the guns and the potions and whatever else, because that'll help us uphold our tenants, our virtues. What do you think? I've got a binary for you. Mm-hmm. Nobility or purity? Ooh. Purity. Both are fun in very different directions. What do you think, Michael? I like purity. Okay, I was going to say nobility. Ethan, really? what do you, with your, your vote? I was skewing towards nobility because unfortunately okay. in our current timescape purity is carrying a little more baggage than normal yeah, rough. That's fair. And nobility is like you know it, it feels that that it's tend- all it's also like fun because it's subjective and elitist <laughs> like <laughs> in a very big way the term uh-huh. nobility is very like has a lot of uh baggage with it so michael great idea literally three weeks ago yeah I that's been like here I- I would have been like, purity's great. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. It's been a rough three weeks. <laughs> yep. You know, I I agree. <laughs> uh, okay, so nobility. And then what was the question you came up with, Spencer? Or fact? Uh, the fact that I came up with was this is the, the nobility has accepted technology second only to the primaterial plane. 
they've widely integrated technology into their domain. You know, guns, health potions, buildings, whatever. They were like, these are tools that we can use to push our tenants. This is perfect. So they're the widest adopters of new technology besides uh, the regular plane. The other thing I love about that is it's an awesome send up of the the best swords that were ever made were made by elves 10,000 years ago trope, which is like they had these ancient celestial blades and shields and staves and spears and they were like oh no this is awesome like they bought in instantly is really yeah. good um i love the idea of like the the just a car will probably stick around with like angels of justice all of a sudden their perception of a flaming sword became these like molten hot guns like a revolver that is gleaming as if still being made mm -hmm. uh, okay so uh accepted tech in a big way i love and then we need one more thing that is true about the about nobility, the plane of the plane of celestials. Um, is it physically uncomfortable to be there? Is it tough, or is it the opposite of tough? It feels great to be there. Is the is the air perfect, or is the or is it uncomfortable for a mortal to be there? I think, I think both that... are. I think both are fun. So I want to kick it your way. I was gonna say very comfortable it's very nice here that gives people more of a reason to visit but the flip side of that is you can still get killed for stealing a lollipop when you're a child so it's like maybe you don't want to hang out there for too long mm -hmm. but it is very nice i like it because I, I it weirdly like encourages the fighting to be centered there yeah mm -hmm. like it's a place where you are going to feel great like the air is the perfect concept of air the water in the stream is the perfect concept of water so it's super easy to sustain combat it's just you're fighting a 10 foot tall angel with revolvers that look like cannons yes yeah. <laughs> it's like uh going in lord of the rings to the realms of the elves it's like wow this place is fucking incredible what are you putting in this water this is insane but then Legolas shoots you with an arrow for a mile yeah, exactly. away because you stepped on a daisy and you're like, what? <laughs> you know? yeah. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so we've done two truths about nobility. Do we? Are we doing two truths and a lie? Like, do we want one thing that oh, is what not... they what people think it is? A, a misunderstanding of the plane could be kind of cool. Either I think either a misunderstanding or something that we're very specifically like this is not part. Like this is something that is usually true about that kind of plane mm. true in this case or this is something that people think because they're dumb i think that both of those are great i do have one that is people think this because they're dumb and that's that the angels and nobility like the creatures that are built within nobility if they're killed there they don't die they're just, they just come back a little while later on and that's not true they just they die people are just mm. dumb and they think that they come back because they don't spend any time there, there to find out it's a, a myth yeah, they they always view it as like the whatever the Norse mythology of where they go to when they die they go to fight forever. It's it's back. great because it gives it gives a reason that people not in the know would never want to go there. They'd be like, "Are you kidding me? Like even if you killed it, it'll hunt you to the end of time. Like it'll remember you." But like um, increasingly, Langston is the villain for me. Uh, but what? like Big Bang, Big Bad Langston is like. I've, I have tracked the numbers. There are less on the battlefield than there were a century ago. Like, mm -hmm. he's very confident that they are winning this fight, uh, albeit slowly. I think we can do whichever we think is more fun as we go yeah. through the planes. Yeah, that we, works. We'll do either or, and we'll have some fun with it. I fucking love Langston McCree so much. <laughs> I'm immediately such a big fan of Langston. That's, that kicks ass. Um, so sticking with that naming convention... Let's hit the fiends. Let's name this bastard. Um, which one are we looking at now? The fiendish plane. The fiends. Okay. So if nobility is created by great virtues and like things that people idolize to the point that they grow too idyllic, I think fiendish we can go pretty safely with the opposite, which is basically what the hells are, right? The the mm -hmm. this is like fears of tyranny fears of subjugation fears of fire and pain and blah 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 blah, blah are just blown out of proportion mm -hmm. um it's tempting i think low-hanging fruit is we just name this plane terror like terror or fear or uh something like that what do you guys think of spencer seemed to disagree with that idea 
so uh, what I'm thinking is more in the realm of you know what constitutes evil in D and D is selfishness versus selflessness. So if we're looking at like nobility and pride, whatever, whatever else, something that's more in tune with like self-serving interests, something around that. So that way, it's not so, like I'm not going to go there. That place is called pain. Yeah. Fuck that. So I've got I've got I've got our uh, synonyms for selfishness pulled up. We've got some good ones off the bat. We've got egomania mm. is pretty good. Greed. Uh, egotism. Egomania and greed both feel very good to me. I'm gonna hit thesaurus.com see if we get anything a little bit a little bit spicier. Egotist is a pretty cool, I think, title. Ego. Egotist, egoism. Um and we, got, lines. we got egotistical, egocentric, greedy, egoistic, narcissistic, egoistical. I think how about egostasis? <laughs> mm. Egostasis is pretty good. Ego. This is, and this is, hey guys, welcome to the fun part of D&D. <laughs> yeah, this is where you get into the room. It's, it's, it's throwing it's words. There, throwing words against, <laughs> against the wall. being like, True. ego sphere? Ego. Could you, ego. We could just say ego. <laughs> We're going to Ego. It's just none of these feel good the way nobility did. And it was just the first synonym. <laughs> yeah, true. So let's let's hit another word. Selfishness is close. Or we go like egalia or go. What? I'm gonna hit what egotistical synonyms. Yeah. I was gonna say if you're trying to go a little bit more away, self interest. You know, something for that. Oh, vanity. Vanity, yeah, that's, that's a good. sick domain yeah. name. Absolutely. Vanity's good. Awesome. It's it's I again, it's bizarre. One of those naming uh people complain about naming all the time and they are right, but once you get it, you're like, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Vanity is in like egotism. All right, let's get two truths and a lie or two truths and something that is definitely not true that is usually true of uh hell planes. Uh one truth is is that this place is the wildest area it's like there are devils that you can interact with and make deals with and all that shit but there's also lower level devils that are just the embodiment of pain and if there's something that's the embodiment of pain walking around it's going to be a fucked up place you're it's yeah. going to be destroyed and wild and not well kept shit like that it is just incredibly dangerous because it's not civilized really I like that. I uh, this this like, a lot of people tie their fictional hells to bureaucracy as this like deeply uncomfortable thing, but I don't think this world has interacted with it enough for that to be the problem. They're kind of stuck in this wild west. So I think a lot of I think something I want to be true is a lot of what we usually associate with the Shadowfell, the upside down. For those of you who are like, this is my first time trying to think of D and D. Um, I like the idea that for this world, a lot of the like real big tragedies that would fill this place aren't going to be, you know, tyranny and pride. They're going to be hunger. It's going to be like hunger and drought and like natural disasters that will just take your whole business out. Yeah. Maybe uh, like I, we. I agree. I think that combining the it, from D and D like the devils and the demons into one ecosystem instead of a warring faction, I think would probably treat us pretty well. That's where you get, you know, devils you can yeah. make deals with and also the embodiment of hunger being a piece of yeah. shit. There fight. we go. I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. So, so, de so devils are the evils of the world that sort of act. And this is pretty to the letter, but that sort of act in the like legalese and power structures of the world. And the demons in this plane are those are like manifestations of the of shitty stuff. Yeah, exactly. Love and that. Then it's like it's not you know you're going to go to the nine hells versus you're going to go into the abyss. It's just they're all here. Maybe you'll encounter a devil you can talk to. Maybe you won't. Good I luck. I love that because it makes me picture the reason that this is like the Wild West is I imagine the devil like, and again we're probably just going to go broad fiend, but like devilish fiends 
probably live in cities with big walls yeah and are like so careful and never want to go out and go out very safely with escorts and demons are the beasts demons are the monsters demons are like the 70 foot tall skeleton that you watch walk at night that is the representation of loneliness like yeah. as it trounces mm -hmm. by exactly so that gives you a reason for it to be dangerous and it also gives you factions to interact with when you're trying to get more arcane rock or whatever the thing yeah. is that people are going to buy so what is what what is the 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 whoopsie here what is something that is either that people think is true that isn't or what is something that is normally true of your fantasy hells that we are not not down with i mean there's an, a little fun idea i shoot down if you don't like it but there's like a uh, I'm just going to say, like, a king of hell that it just, like, consorts and try, is just against all, like, all humans. Uh, so that, that's the myth, or that's a truth? That's the myth. Oh, that there is that. a leader, yeah. They all think there's, like, Mephistopheles somewhere mm -hmm. chilling, and there's just not. It's just in, it's yeah. just an eco. I love that, yeah. Well, I do like that. That's perfect. Maybe you could kill him, but everything's good now. Yeah, nope. <laughs> There's no dude you can kill in hell that's going to fix all the problems. It's I, I honestly really like that. I like it because it mirrors our thing in nobility a lot of, like, people are looking for an easy solution, and it's like, hey, man, no nope. way. <laughs> not going to find it. Gosh, nice. I have a lot of... I have so many note cards already. Both yeah. of these feel great, and they're really displaying the opposite sides of the same coin in our, our genre. So I do think that's nice. And they also, we've done really good sticking to this, like, and again, this is just sort of because we've we've talked it through here, like, the Western feel is still very much like pockets of civilization where you could travel in vanity, and then this untamed, hard to deal with. And I think nobility is probably the same way. Like, if you can get to the place where like the celestials of peace are like hell yeah you've done it like you've made it to like that's like camp a that you can get to and you will be relatively safe mm -hmm. like little pockets of places you can go in a dangerous and, and difficult to navigate yeah. uh, reality like the desert in a western you know going from town to town mm -hmm. you're gonna run into bandits and uh rattlesnakes yeah. whatever else because we're hurting for time i'm gonna skip the underworld because i think the underworld is kind of kind of wrapped up and, yeah, and can be a bit of an afterthought yeah. uh i do want to say do we want a name for this mythological king of the of hell so i like johnny the kid <laughs> that is fun i think staying the King of Hell or, you know, Nick Scratch, shit like that would be great. It, it, yeah, exactly. It could be it could be anything. It's just when people say it, they do it in a way that you know that they're talking about the devil. I think the he's devil. like classic boogeyman. Like what like what what happened? Sam Hain took your socks, man. That's why there's only one in the dryer. Like I think that's uh I think that he is nameless and that helps. Yeah. Mm. Because I think if there was a name, you could ask questions. But instead, right, you ask a devil, like, is there a king of hell? The devil's going to be like, there are people in charge of me. Yeah. Like, he's going to be like, yeah, I think there, there are people who I think of as king. So, so the devils don't really even know for sure. If you go up no. high enough, one of them maybe knows, but like... He's the one in the, yeah, eventually you reach the most powerful devil and you're like, are you the king of hell? And he goes, no. Oh my God. I almost got killed last week. Somebody yeah. poisoned my team. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm strong. Um, but... Yeah, I could kill all the other devils, you know, one at a time, but I'm not in charge. Um, So I've got, so let's hop to the magic plane. I'm going to try to, I, I, we can probably, we can go there. over, but I, I, I don't want to go over by too much. I've got, already quite a bit of heat off the top i've got hmm. occult esoteric and obscure mm -hmm. right off the top all feel pretty good to me i think the idea of it being this dead plane is great it like this this plane of existence is essentially rotted things are falling apart you can still find people there but they are cultists they're some sort of magically twisted beings it's not like you're going to find help in this this plane. 
so our first like fact about it is dead slash dying like yeah. to the extreme this isn't like un- this is not the community fighting for its life that's the prime material plane this mm-hmm. is the community that died like this this yeah. place was killed by an archmage they never even knew was trying to get to them yeah this is what you're looking at when you're thinking what's the worst case scenario for our plane it's a mirror to show your players like this is what happened to them if shit doesn't go right it could happen to you yeah and you're um, next the prime material plane okay. next weakest what do you want to call it? Quickly. I'm I'm increasingly attached to a cult. Yeah. Because okay. we're kind of framing it in this like dead lights kind of thing. I've got a cult, I've got sorcery, I've got devilry. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna work. Uh um, yeah, I, I was thinking like mystic or I it couldn't have had a name before it died. That's why I was kind yeah, of it thinking. was mystic and now it's occult. Yeah, that's cool. the The old world when you're interacting with them, they're like, "Oh yeah, we've been trying to commune with mystic." But if you're talking to anybody in the new world, they're like, "No, we don't go to a cult. We do not fuck yeah. with that place." That place is that's a quick way to quick way to end up dead because there has to be like the equivalent of like magical mosquitoes trying yeah. to like suck any bit of arcane out of anything they can get their hands on. Mm-hmm. And I think that the the mistruth, the misunderstanding is the old world believes that there are still enclaves of high level magic users at Mystic but that just, just don't exist, them. and they're trying to talk with them, and they are not there. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put like El Dorado rumors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's exactly. like the city of gold it's like no 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 no, no. they consolidated their magic yeah. like there's a a great arcane prism like the uh the yeah. great crystal uh you almost uh, think it's like an oasis yeah. so i have our i have our other truth then i think that like predatory dangerous beings have been left behind and like grown out of this and i think they send false visions Oh yeah. I think I think there there are like people who actively have dreams of like the great crystal city of a cult that they look for constantly and travel there to find and it's just like a celestial anglerfish mm-hmm. just pulling in powerful magic users looking for this city so that it can feed and keep itself alive. Awesome. Uh, that's probably that's probably where our mind flayers are in this world. Yeah. Um it's the mind flayers. There are other worldly beings. And it also gives us the fun of like there are dying races, are are sort of like Githyanki, Githzerai, aren't this like divided space pirates. They're like, no, 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 our our race is doomed. We have to kill them before we die. Mm-hmm. Like we we can't like our generations are getting weaker and we're getting more frail. We need to kill them before we die off, or the mortal plane is going to get like these things are going to invade and yeah. actually manage to bring themselves back. In this world also, this plane, you can have a Githyanki player because there's still some of them that are alive that were just off plane when this, this shit went bad. Or there's mm-hmm. some that aren't willing to stay dying on their dying world and we're like, listen, I respect the mission. I'm going I'm going to the prime and I'm yeah. gonna go just live my life. Like I'm gonna go have a normal life there. I'm gonna die of old age and mm-hmm. you all can keep fighting your space monster. I don't I'm not doing it. <laughs> and this this way you still you don't have to tell your players no to any class choice. Yeah. They were there. They are there. They can play them. Yeah, and mm-hmm. any any oddball race that you're like, but I didn't put them in the lore. Yes, you did. They're from Mystic, and they're like one of a few that managed to escape in yep. this wave and so you don't need to play in the culture that they were a part of they might not know like they might just be yeah. in a somebody might have like jor eld them and been like our last era the last egg of the disappearing era kokra we send it to the prime material plane yeah. to survive yeah. you don't need any lore they're not gonna find any <laughs> like, no yeah, it was blown to smithereens you yeah. have a super yeah. yeah they get a superman cape and you get to, you get to call it a day <laughs> like, yeah. exactly one other thing i'm jumping around a little bit uh, I, I mentioned it briefly about the one plane being immune to, like, technology damage. Oh, yeah. Um, what if this place is immune to magical? Uh, because it's already over-imbued with magic? Yeah. Well, and what's and what's fun about that is it's just, like, in the lore, like, uh, uh, mind flayers are resistant to magical yeah. damage. Because mm-hmm. they do 
shit. There's a bunch of like mag powerful magical creatures that are resistant. So I think that's definitely true. I think creatures from the plane of like Mystic now a cult they... are relatively unbothered by magic or at least can survive it. Mm -hmm. Which is also why technology is such a problem. The mind yeah. flayer is like, I will block your spells, and you're like, block this, <laughs> block, block my Glock, idiot. Like, yeah, yeah it's he's... like a Godzilla and nukes, right? They just eat up the magic, and it makes them stronger. Yeah, but a gun, a gunshot. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right, I just wanted to add that a little bit in before yeah. we jump to a different one. No, it's good. Uh, I I like that as an addition, and it fits in nice and neat with the kind of creatures from the monsters manual that I'm thinking like of slotting in. And to be honest, the stat blocks that you can just be like, now it's a arcane terror, and it's got yeah. lit, and the mm -hmm. short sword attack is now a grabble or whatever the sure whatever. yeah you can mess um, with all that. All right, let's do our totally not the Feywild because the Feywild is trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... We're like we're going. What the, is nature? The way filed. Is nature the core of our? Is the core of their magic right? Yeah, that's that's definitely what we went with. It's like how magic interacted with nature, like how things are born of nature. There, right? All right, I've got right off the top. I've got three that just feel good. I've got creation. I've got essence, and I've got cradle. What about arboreal? Which I think is fun, just because it fits. Sure, mm -hmm. the, the sound of it is nice. I, I I've been steamrolling the names a little bit. Arboreal, it is. <laughs> there you go, arboreal. Um, I want maybe one of our extra cradle. I'm attached to, but we'll stick that somewhere else. There's more fun places to cradle. Play. I like, but it's because it's my favorite book series. It's called the Cradle series. <laughs> cradle for the afterlife, because it's where you go before you're reborn. I think awesome. also fits well. I just get to grab another card. Okay, so Arboreal. We need two truths and a lie. And uh, we're just gonna we're gonna stint over a couple minutes. The easy oh, option right. is they have they have accepted technology, not at all. There's there's one train station there that they can't destroy for whatever reason. But there's not guns. There's not skyscrapers. There's no health potions that are being mass produced. They are the old world at its core. So they cut themselves. So I think our other truth is like, we might have to kind of scrap the deal and the Feywild having been harvested a lot. Like, how, if we want to, we can like turn it up to 11 isolated wise, and they can have cut themselves off during the flood. Oh. Like, they can, they can, if they can have seen the flood off in the distance and like sequestered themselves then or do we want them to have had a very negative run in and decided and banned it forever i think that it, it's fun to say like they shut it down at the beginning but i also think that it could be interesting for players to be like the people that are still married to the idea of the old world had time to go back to the feywild where it was like for 20 years or 10 years or five years or whatever they would go back so they could still be uh, Knights of the Round Table and Magical Wizards, etc. Uh, but then something bad happened. They shut it down. And now it's the people who want to go back there can't. The people who are still in the old world are forced to live in the modern industry, like indus industrial complex, knowing that there's a place for them to go to to yeah. cause friction. We've definitely, by the way, uh, it, it, over the course of today, have put, placed ourselves in the like Sears Roebuck world. Mm. of western like brands like we yeah. really yeah. uh well because there's the option right where it's just like i am vaguely the city right i'm brick i'm brick roads we've we've kind of gone like no 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 i'm miss i'm miss mabel's medicine tonic like <laughs> yeah. we've gone in a very specific direction oh yeah. True. uh so we've got no magic at all and we have so like there are holdout i think our other one should then be because i like that that people had time i think there are like little pockets of no like me and my band of knights left when they closed the gate and so i think there are people living here that are just also hopelessly out of touch mm -hmm. yeah they don't know what's going on with the rest of the world because they're shut down so you can find king arthur and his merry band of knights but they're gonna be like what are you talking about uh uh with the god of the arcane dying we we're just vibing over here what, what do you mean you know 
the further the sooner they shut down after the consequence the less they'll know so where that shutdown happened i think is pretty up to us still but i do think there, there will be people there human beings who just are part of the old world still uh and so then we've got Arboreal. We need a lie or something that is usually true about the Feywild that we just don't like or don't feel like interacting with. I think that what I wouldn't feel like interacting with in this world is that idea of Fey that are so out of touch that they can't interact with people. Where it's like, oh, you said your name, now it's mine. Like, I don't think that that's as yeah, fun. I, some of us like Onomancy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think people, I think you're right. I think that that busies it a bit much. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think people might think it's a real thing, but it just isn't. Yeah, so it, I, it, it I, could be both. I like I I don't th- I I yeah I think it that like folklore has had time to build back up. So some people are like, oh, like the Trixie fairy that took your cousin's middle name. Uh, no, I think I like that because its purpose isn't to be the contract place. We have our contract place. Mm -hmm. Its purpose is to be this bastion of the old arcane that won't do it. So I, 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 so we're not interacting with the like fickle. Mm -hmm. And there could be like some, some that are still that old way. Like they're just playful. Yeah, I think there's like trolls under the bridges, but I think there there's trolls under the bridges in the like King Arthur night. We're gonna go off on an adventure, and oh, we've run into these trials and tribulations, yeah. rather than the like in the Feywild when you come back, maybe a hundred years have passed. I think is mm-hmm. not. I think instead it is just this, like Spencer was saying, it's just this outworld that has just been. It's a time capsule. You go there with mm-hmm. your gun, and somebody with like a great sword is like. <laughs> stick out of my face idiot (laughs) and it was this the one that is immune to the technology damage i think that it would be better for for uh occult to be immune to magical damage still or uh technological damage oh wait no it's technological yeah wait wait, we we had them both run on magic yeah True. I'm going to say, I think we can mix column A and column B. I think the mortal creatures of Arboreal can totally still be killed by bullets, but don't know what they are. I do <laughs> think there are, like, I think there are very powerful natural spirits that don't understand what a gun is, and so if you shot it at them, yeah. it just wouldn't work because they wouldn't think it would work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, They wouldn't understand that there was a threat, and so the bullet would just, like, bounce off, and they'd be like, what a silly toy you have. It's like a sling, but it's far too weak. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Which is probably part of the reason they closed off beyond just taking all their resources. They were like, if we allow this to extend any further we are going to be mortal and that is not chill <laughs> one of the i'm picturing a fey on a uh on a sitting on a log reading the lorax like no no we gotta uh, close the game uh, this is not we're not one slurring this shit we gotta go yeah uh, uh what, oak oaken oakenworth is that his name oh i think that's the title or you're it's oakworth i think oakworth, uh, oakworth this will be yeah, Oakworth was the one reading. He was like, this is not chill, guys. We cannot do this. Shut so, down now. Yeah, here's a, so I think that's worth investigating. Did Oakworth pull the plug? Are the journal entries we're seeing these, like, apocalyptic, like, scribbled hastily, like, we must close the arboreal gate now. We cannot wait. Like, are his, are his interactions his journal that's, like, passively? Or is it, like, furious letters to other courts like to the summer court, like you must seal your gate. This is growing yeah. to be too tiresome. I think it'd be a uh, mix of both of them. Uh, yeah, I do think. I think Oakworth being that prophet that's like, this is not good, and we are going to get fucked harder than anybody else if we do not stop this now. And then it, convincing them through these journal entries, and then after it's closed, we can have further like later entries where it's like he's still seeing what's happening in the worlds, and he's like, this is why. Like this is exactly it. Healthrus is using demonic potions now that are going to curse everybody. Yeah. So it's both. So I think we're, I know we're, we should move on to the cradle, but I have one big question about Arboreal for me, which is, is this plan going to work? Mm-hmm. I like both options. Is Arboreal safe? Will the death of magic just 
not spread to our boreal? Is our bear or boreal running on natural magic? And so the death of the god of magic is just going to pass them by, and they are going to be this little Camelot that is going to just live forever in their little bubble as long as it stays a bubble. We basically need to decide, is natural magic a quantifiable different source than arcane magic and divine magic? Or is everybody pulling from magic? Like, are clerics going to lose their powers? Or is it just arcane users that are going to suffer? I think, so here's what I, what I think. I think that everybody runs off of the same pool of magic. Like, that's where all of the shit comes from. Because they shut off and they are more naturally magically in tune, uh, I think that they'll have maybe a century or two centuries or a millennia of magic use still because they shut it off so soon that it, it hasn't been pulled from. But I do think that eventually that bill is going to come due for them. It's just they've pushed it back so long that they're like, well, we got plenty of time. We don't have to worry about it. We can fix it later on. They might not even know it because they've yeah. pushed it back so far. So this is a, so let's set the timetable then. Is Are there corners of Arboreal that are already dying? Or is this 10,000 years off and what's going to happen is all the rest of the planes are going to wither and die and Arboreal is going to be left as this like lone sentinel that's too late. So, like, are they going to have to watch themselves very slowly right away? Or is it going to crash into them in 20 years? I think slowly right away. I think that having this... Because then it's... They might not know that they're still in danger. So they're not going to be willing to help and reopen and work together. Mm -hmm. Unless the heroes can sway them in some manner and prove to them that it's going to come for them, too. So it's yeah. not right. It is great. This is... Uh, uh, an oasis for the next few thousand years. Yeah. Hmm. And then it's going to fall apart. I, I, okay. I don't like, think a few thousand. I think like a hundred top. Uh, uh, 200 tops. The, so that's jumping into another question we're going to have to answer later, which is how long do our elves live? Yeah. If our <laughs> elves live to be a thousand, our timetable's got to move out. It's got to be 5,000. Like, we've got to push mm. it out because otherwise these elves would be watching it and would be like, oh, dear Lord, no, things have changed slightly in my thousand years of living. We're all going to die. Yeah. If elves live as long as people, then, yeah, it can be 110 yeah. years off, and that's just far enough that nobody is watching the decline in real time. I think that because we're dealing with, like, nature spirits and shit, they could be essentially ageless. So I would push for a longer time frame okay. because it doesn't matter. Like it really doesn't matter how long it will take for them to decay. As long as it is sometime in the future that they don't give a shit about it. So yeah, even their best Oracle, uh, Oakworth could be like, mm, I think that there might be a problem, but everybody else is like, you're a kook. We don't believe you. We're fine. Whoa. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Oakworth has been turned on was that he was the one who at first was like, we need to close ourselves off. and was like celebrated. But now he's like, okay, now we need to roll our sleeves up and find the solution because we're going to run out. And people are like, you're be you we already solved the problem. Stop being a curmudgeon. Like yep. you, I'm sorry. You're not the center of attention anymore. Oakworth, but <laughs> it's going to be fine. Yeah. Two, two, one thing, but two, two parted is Oakworth the only proof or is there like the smallest minute things that we could see currently that show signs? I think, I think elves are living to be 985 instead of a thousand. Maybe like, I think like at the very, very dim edges, things are starting to shift, but I like the, mm -hmm. the most minute, version that you could look at all of it and oakworth does and it's like this leaf according to our legends has 27 like polyps that grow and there's only 26 like he's yeah. trying and it's yeah. but it's so far off yeah it's so like, acceptable because and like uh just along with that it story wise super super cool for the players how is this going to affect them because they aren't going to see a thousand years out uh the way that it affects them for my mind is uh the arboreal is the guy from casablanca mm -hmm. right the the tent the conflict ends if you can just get humphrey bogart to fucking listen 
Mm-hmm. Like if you can just get him to sit down and see how screwed his situation is, problem's gone. Mm-hmm. Problem's gone. The Archfey roll up and are like, what's up? We restore your magical trees and set about to doing the like incredibly hard work of restoring the nat- natural magical ley lines of the primaterial plane. Some of us have to give up our lives to do it, but it can be done. Mm-hmm. The issue is just like, who? no one's listening to you. Gotcha. It gives... I think the player's problem is that it is far off. And so even the ones that can see it are still refuting it. So mm-hmm. it's like, because otherwise, I like the idea of the scary reality for our Boreal is in 3,000 years when their borders are closed off and all the other worlds are just dead. And there's, mm-hmm. and there's, there's nothing they can do. The ley lines have been completely shattered. Some of the planes have started to unravel and like unmake themselves. And so all our boreal can do is wait to die. Mm-hmm. Yep. Whereas if you could convince them that this is happening, I think that maybe they do have some things they could do to try to like correct the balance of the world. Mm-hmm. They just can't because they've decided to save themselves. Yeah. And, and for the players, like having it a thousand years in the future where they're not able to witness it because the 26 versus 27 polyps is going to go over their head. That's what Oakworth is for in that campaign where they're trying to fix that issue. They can talk to Oakworth and Oakworth can tell them there are 26 instead of 27 polyps on this. This is bad. And they can choose to believe him and work with him to make the that solution happen right mm-hmm. they don't need to see the signs they need somebody to be able to tell them that there are signs i also don't know how much players will want to interact with that storyline because it is too yeah. close to climate change hmm. yeah it's too much the like um i don't know i have a february birthday it used to snow on my birthday every year it doesn't <laughs> snow on my birthday anymore yeah, right no. like no. uh I think that that might hit a little too close. It would be like if we had a plague dimension. It's going to be like, yeah, cool. That's cool. Uh-huh. And it's staying over there. like, And we're not going to touch it. But it gives uh, a reason for them not to interact, is that it's so far in the future they don't believe and, it. And it gives a, a good plot hook of like persuading people is how you need to get it. You need to like play them off of each other. Mm-hmm. If you're even going to have an attempt, you need to be like, I heard that like the, like the Archfey of the Seelie Court doesn't believe Oakworth. I almost laughed in his court when I heard that and like try to play them off each other. is like mm-hmm. the only hope you have. Yeah, so yeah. we're 15 over. Let's Last hit the cradle. Up. Let's hit cradle. cradle. We've got two cool, truths cool, cool. and a lie about our underworld. Uh, we already did a little bit of work on cradle. Um, it's true that you can visit here and your dead party member will be there. You can chat with him. You can talk with them. Uh, but that's only going to last for a week, a month, two months he's gonna forget who he is eventually yeah um how fast do we want that do we want that to be based on anything do we want that to be a certain speed or is it like set is it like cool you have 72 hours to go see your friend i think that making it set is probably the most useful because it's like everybody has one month in cradle before they're gone so if you want to visit your your loved one you better save up the ten thousand gold and visit them in the next 30 days I want to make it a little meaner. Sure. I think with a minimum of one week, I think you stay in Cradle a number of weeks equal to your wisdom modifier in Dungeons & Dragons. Mm. It's how long can you hold on to your psyche. If you have a plus five, you got a, you got a month and a week. You are going to be able to like really hold on to yourself, say your mantras, and like stay yourself, stay in your memories before you fade. Mm. But if the barbarian dies and has a minus two. He has seven days before he's going to slip off and be somewhere else. And that works because every commoner who dies is going to have seven days. Everybody be like, Oh yeah, you get about seven days before you go. No less, but occasionally like an extra day or two, but for a hero, you've got extra time. Uh, It also gives us the fun of, I like tying our world to the stats, like making things, making D and D feel like it's part of the world is something Mm -hmm. that, all the love D and D doesn't do like D and D has a lot of things where you're like, they can do this. I know that's against the rules. Just believe me. This is yep. one of those things where it's like, no, this is a rule that affects the world. Like if yep. you are not wise and able to control your mind enough, you're going to slip away. Yeah. Do you... Your cleric dies. You got some time to make that money. If barbarian dies. You better jump on that train and hope they don't find you. 
Do you? Because I think, think this. Oh, sorry. I think this. I just want to say this also gives us a reviv a reviv revivify window. Mm -hmm. sure. Even yeah. true res yeah. even true resurrection. If they're a dipshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you'll get back. I think you'll still bring them back no matter what. But what are you going to bring back? Like you're going to bring mm -hmm. back like a fractured mind mm -hmm. that can barely hold itself together versus somebody that's got 37 days is going to come back and they're going to be like, oh, cool. <laughs> like that weird. Really yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's a question I've got for it. Can you pull somebody back and put them into their body? Or do you have to cast Revivify, Resurrection, whatever else? You've got to cast. you got to break yeah. it. I think you got to break it to get somebody out. There's no, you, you can't bring a ghost on the train and bring them back and bring them to their body. You've got to break them out. Well, we bring I, the I, body to Yeah, it. bring the body up. <laughs> Jump in. Bring How about a dead body our, on the train. How about that's our myth? The myth is that if you bring a body aboard the train, that person's body, they can. Uh, and so like, and yeah. so like uh, that tradition that we're talking about, an aspect of that tradition can be trying to sneak their ashes with you to cradle. Because mm -hmm. then they could like possess their own body, uh, and I think it's not true. Uh huh. Yeah. I this is the only problem I have with this because I I agree I think this is all good. I think that your players should have a reason to go. Well, no, that's not true. Uh, I I take that back. The reason to go would be an NPC dies, not a player character they can revive. But an NPC dies in front of them before they can get the information. They need to go there in the next seven days to get that information. I was going to say being able to go and revive that way would give them a built-in reason. Not necessary. I've corrected I think, myself. I think the other reason that's really good is I think it's hard as shit to find people in Cradle. Yeah. Like, I think Cradle is a very large, hollow, like, wind howling through a canyon, like, yeah. impossibly massive space. Yeah. Because that mm -hmm. makes it, like, the struggle is finding your friend. Like, you need to go there and you need to try to scry try to find some because i think a lot of people never see the loved one again because that's why yeah. otherwise every murder case would be solved yeah it, it's mostly just a question of why are you trying to get to them like what what are you trying to get out of it as a player character why would you want to visit mm. and the answer is like there's some bit of information you can't get anywhere else and you i also think that. it's probably a faux pas to like try to tap the natural resources of cradle Hmm. Yeah, probably. but so for the for the enterprising artificer player of fifth level, they're like, "Can we hit up Cradle?" Like, yeah. what are you gonna say, Michael? Uh, so two two things. Uh, neither of you guys have seen the new season of um, Seven Daily Sins, have you? No, Ethan. No, I have not. All right, I how you just talked about the uh, the after life is exactly how it is in uh, Seven Deadly Sins, where it's just ever-expanding, and they went there to find somebody, and it literally took him 3,000 years to find him. Yeah, it's like um, that. It's like it's a huge desert, right? Tumbleweeds blow through, yeah. random spirits pop up in front of you. Good fucking luck. Mm -hmm. Do we want it to be our astral sea? Like, do imagined things manifest there? Sure. Or is that too much shenanigans? I think that makes sense. It also gives us, like, plane shift and etherealness. That's where you pop into is this endless desert that has all these imagined items and spirits and shit you can try and find, but it's really hard. The, I like The question I had, and it could be our second truth to the area, is, is does time work differently there? I think it does for the things living there. I don't mm -hmm, think it exactly. does. I think that there is like a planar clock yeah. that ticks. And so seven days is seven days, no matter where you are. But I think the, the body, the souls there maybe are experiencing some time dilation. Again, I think you can have a lot of fun attaching that to intelligence or wisdom or maybe even charisma. Like if somebody has a high enough charisma, like enough sense of personality, they can like be no it has been two days i know how long it's been <laughs> like mm -hmm. this is ridiculous i think if you lose touch with that i think the reason one of the reasons you fade in seven days is you feel like you've been there for years mm. yeah yeah because it's just howling wind and time and sand and dirt and if you were this like incredibly wise intelligent character 
you could start to like carve out a little circle of reality, right? You can be like, okay, picture my childhood home. Picture, and it would start to like conjure out of sand, and you and that gives you more yourself. time, mm-hmm. yeah. And so you would, it would make it easier to find people that were incredibly wise that could like carve out a little space for themselves. But for the person that's like not attached to who they were, there's just nothing to grab onto. They feel like they've been there for a year when they've been there for three hours. They're itching to go. They want to like, I think get the cycle moving. I think charisma works for that. So you've got two different things here right the wisdom makes it so you can survive there longer but charisma makes it easier to be found your sheer force of personality is bigger so you're going to be the bard is going to have a bar here there he's playing music whatever i'm gonna i'm gonna put like intelligence charisma wisdom like i think whatever your dominant traits are will help you in different ways i think wisdom sets the timer but Mm -hmm. i think the other two help you like be findable and survive because intelligence yeah. would help you be like i know that this is a plane i know it exists i know it takes up space i understand how planes work and how time works yeah, get to a dense area yeah, yeah i can get to a dense you, area i can move you can find the train if you've got a high enough intelligence you're like this is there's a fucking train here where is that my friends are gonna come get me i'm gonna yeah. go there there are brilliant wizards who died um that just immediately pop up and they're like, oh, well, gotta go. And they find the highest mm-hmm. structure they can. They look until they see glinting right. metal and they go, ha, and just go and just walk mm-hmm. in a single direction. Yeah. But if you don't have the intelligence to keep that perception, you, to what Spencer said, you have the opposite. You're like, I'm going to build a big fire. I'm going to get every soul that wants to dance around me. And we're going to make so much noise that they'll hear us at the train station. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then you've got strength and dexterity, which is like strength. Maybe your body is pushed less far into the plane you just pop up you know closer to the train either that or whatever either that or strength dex and con are like nothing it's like oh cool that was that was your body dog yeah (laughs) i like that yeah that works hey you don't have a body anymore dude no muscles i don't know what to tell you now um along with all that you said there's reincarnation yeah, yeah, when you're, I, 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 it you're solves a lot of problems. If when your soul reaches that, a certain age, like ends, it reemerges. That works. Do, does the soul have any impact on what they reincarnate, reincarnate oh, yeah. into, no. or, or is it complete chance? Or is it just if you get reincarnated? If you were a human, you are reincarnated as a human. If you were a githyanki, you're reincarnated as a githyanki, an angel, think- an angel. Whatever. I think it, I like the idea that it doesn't, I think, I like the idea that it is mixed. I love the idea that celestials are part of it. Hmm. Yeah. Celestials beef it and come back as a badger is so good. So uh, I think that, I think it's fun if it is in the like, I don't know, like the tests they do to find like the new Dalai Lama when the Dalai Lama yeah. dies. They like lay out a bunch of things. I think you might be generally attracted to your last life. Mm. and maybe it like echoes back a little bit but i don't think it's i don't think it's like when i sleep i dream my past wife i think it's like pretty loose yeah this is like a a mind over matter thing a god isn't saying you're gonna be a rat you're gonna be the next uh hugh hefner or something i don't know that's the first thing that popped in my head it's just like whatever you perceived yourself as previously you'll come back in a similar manner you know if you were a piece of shit and you feel like you were a piece of shit, you'd probably come back as a worm just because that's what you're going to come back as. You know, something like that. This, this has been, this, this has been a, a hefty. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I think that's good. I think we've, we've wrapped up our five planes. We've got a lot of interesting questions left for next time. Let me find my, I'm going to poke around for my card that tells me what we're up to next time. I was just about one, to ask what, yeah, uh, what is on the docket. The next one, I think, is going to be the Pantheon. The gods of your universe. What they do, how they do it, who they are, what their ideals are, how they interact, how players mm-hmm. can inter- interact with them. We touched on it very loosely by saying that their planes are not yeah. enterable. So we're... Uh, 
Yeah, we're, we're uh, uh, sorry, I got distracted because I saw my reminder to keep things framed in low, neutral, and high effort, and we sort of lost the plot there a little bit. We did so, a little bit. It's like, yeah, there's a few planes, there's hell, there's heaven, yeah. whatever. Middle effort is, we basically did middle effort, actually. We did it with the two truths and a mistruth. Yeah. High um, effort would be, we are building the plane in front of you. Which is, is what I want to do now, is where I'm like, yeah. so... If a soul can stay for seven days, like how does the modifier interact with your magical talent? Like these are questions that I'm left with that most people are like, who gives a shit? <laughs> um, so we have magic or divinity as the next thing we talk about from our like mm -hmm. essentially session zero. Uh, I think we need to square away divinity before we square yeah. away like, how does magic work? So we'll, we'll do the Pantheon next, creating cool. a Pantheon and how we're going to create it. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. That's it for world building for DMEs. Yeah. Um, we'll on qu one. Question. Yeah. Um, with the TTRPG stuff, are you making videos out of what we're talking about so that this will last and people can keep on listening to or a podcast or something? Theoretically, theoretically, theoretically yes. Videos. Uh, we need to sit down and like kind of yeah. plot out what they're going to feel like. It won't be like taking clips from this and putting them together. It'll be taking the information we've distilled and making that into like ten to thirty minute long videos or whatever. Awesome. I was going to say because if you're if you're taking from this, uh, you'll have to get last week's episode fast okay. because that's gonna be gone very soon. I he think he's got it, his notes down, so it should be okay. Yeah, I've got cool. we've got our uh, our notes of what we've come up with, and I think those are going to be more like here's what we came up with. And here's like the sequence of events, right? We started with our genre. We moved into these areas. We moved into these more detailed areas. And here's where you could go. If you really love this, you could do this and this and this and this and this and just keep going, which uh, I'm increasingly thinking we are probably going to turn this into a full setting and we are probably going to end up tooling around because we've done 92% uh -huh. of the work of that. Yeah. yeah. And we can, we can write this and then put it on DMs Guild and sell it. So... Mm -hmm. That'll be sick anyways. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be like a YouTube video format later on. Awesome. Awesome. If you all plug that now or plug your stuff now, go for it. Some, someday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, for right now, you can visit ttrpguy.com. We write articles there on occasion. We haven't been able to do it recently because we're focusing on TTRP Guy videos. Uh, but I mean, I'm in can, grad school. <laughs> yeah, even in grad school, I'm uh, surviving in the city. Uh, but... Check out the website. You can get some DM tools, player tips, etc. off of there. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be able to find us on YouTube at TTRPI once we start editing these videos. Furthermore, come watch us play in the Party Makes Things Worse Theros campaign yeah. every Tuesday uh, at 8 p.m. to yeah. 8.30. It's normally around 8.30 p.m. Yeah. 8.30 p.m. on Tuesdays uh, for our Theros campaign. Yeah. That's it. I'm a dead guy. It's great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, the <laughs> thing that I've been drawing that I kind of stopped halfway through is <laughs> Ethan's character. Gotta love playing a dead guy. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you. Truly, thank you, everyone, so, so much. Yeah, thank you. It's been uh, great. Yeah. All right. I'll see everyone, guys, uh, you guys later. Peace out. Right, Peace. Bye. Peace.